Blake Cousins, third phase of moon. This coming in from LA Marzulli. This could change everything. We are thrilled to be bringing these results to the public. This could rewrite history as we know it. There's going to be a press conference and it's happening tomorrow in Los Angeles at the Marriott and they will be revealing the presentation of the DNA results. Where are they from? A scientific announcement will be made. DNA results from the ancient elongated skulls of Peru shows genetic differences which may conflict with modern day human beings. Dr. L.A. Marzulli, along with a team of eight scientists and researchers, has been working on this project since 2013 and will be holding a press conference again tomorrow to these mysterious elongated skulls. This is going to be a groundbreaking event. The information, especially considering the recent buzz surrounding unexplained UFO activity, potential dwarf planets, space exploration, and the possibility of life outside this Earth. The presentation team includes researchers and biologist Brian Forrester, along with filmmaker Richard Shaw. We're going to be giving updates via third phase of moon into the research and the DNA results being presented tomorrow. Now let's take a look at filmmaker Richard Shaw as he follows around Dr. L.A. Marzulli and Brian Forrester in regards to the ancient mysterious skulls of Peru. Since 2010, I've been directing a series called Watchers with L.A. Marzulli. I knew that L.A. for many years had done an in-depth study on the theory about giants roaming the earth as stated in various ancient texts. As I was attempting to gain insight on this topic for the films we were producing, we both started amassing newspaper clippings going back to the late 1800s. The examples were numerous and revealed giants found in North America as well as the island of Catalina. There's also a preponderance of strange and unusual structures all over the world that no one seems to know who's responsible. Huge megalithic stones weighing hundreds of tons and meticulously put together. Who built them and why? Sometimes the stones were determined to have come from many miles away. With old Hebrew newspapers as well as fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls also citing the finding of giant bones underground and spooking the Arabs who found it and fled in terror, I also had the opportunity to visit Gilgal in Israel and got stuck in the mud in an area along the minefield border with Jordan where ancient texts reveal the location of one of the largest giants in biblical times, the giant Og. If we could try and investigate these ancient texts as historical documents, then it made sense to do that. The mystery remained that strange and unusual findings were located in Peru. LA contacted Brian Forrester a local expert and author who has put a lot of time and effort into studying this phenomena. So we visited the Lima Museum as well as the Ica Museum, where one of the largest skulls in existence is kept. But all these skulls were behind glass. And at the time, the museum in Lima was being remodeled. It wasn't until Brian decided to take us to Paracas and introduce us to Senor Juan Navarro and his private museum that we could examine any of these skulls up close. Seeing them this closely was really amazing. We began on this initial trip to gather information, sizes of the skulls, measure dimensions and cranial mass comparisons with normal skulls. This was the beginning of doing more conclusive testing and DNA testing had to be done. We began to realize that some of these skulls were created via cranial deformation while others seemingly weren't. It was the select few skulls that had none of the customary indentations of cradle headboarding that we were interested in. And it was my job to film and document these trips and our findings. Our search continued over the next few years with permission from Senior Juan to unwrap a baby mummy, one where we knew where the rest of the family had once been buried but had been dug up by the Waikaros, the grave robbers. 
In unwrapping it and getting a dental expert to examine its teeth for clues, it was determined that the baby was between 18 and 24 months old, not old enough for cranial headboarding to have had created such an enormous effect on its head. Gradually, our team got larger with additional archaeological work by Aaron Judkins as well as Mondo Gonzalez. We also realized that we needed a forensic expert to take samples properly and brought in Chase Klautsky, who scientifically tagged and bagged each piece removed in the correct lab containers. In a coincidental meeting, I met a man from Oregon who owned a huge skull from La Arroya, Peru. It had been in his family for decades, and we were allowed to take DNA samples of it. LA contacted three genetics labs that specialized in paleo DNA, who gave us instructions on how to take DNA samples the way they would. As our expertise improved, only the Lakehead Paleo Genetics Lab in Canada would allow us to use their name in the films we were making, while the other two prestigious labs, both in California, preferred to stay anonymous. L.A. then met Rick Woodward, an archaeologist who also had studied skulls of this type and came to the conclusion that elongated skulls that were born this way seemed to all exhibit a repositioning of the foramen magnum, the opening at the base of the skull where the spinal cord connects to the brain. This hole proved to be closer to the occipital area of the head and was smaller in diameter than on a regular human skull. The theory was that it provided more balance to support a head of this size. With permissions in the fall of 2016, we were allowed to take fresh DNA samples from a large number of skulls both from the Ica Museum as well as the late Senior Juan's private museum, which had now been moved to a new location. All these skulls were sampled, photographed, and meticulously detailed by grinding to powder in recessed areas to get fresh DNA samples below the surface of the bone where it would have been contaminated over the years by handling. The powder was taken under the surface, tagged and bagged, and having gone through customs was sent to the labs. Early tests proved repeatedly that the haplogroup origin to the vast majority of these elongated heads, even though they were discovered in Peru, came from the Middle East. And some haplogroups indicated an origin in Europe, North Africa, and the Levant. But today, the remaining evidence from the last trip, where many more skulls were tested, will be revealed for the very first time. You will learn the lab results along with the rest of us, and the overwhelming number of skulls tested should help with this find that even if some of the skulls might have been contaminated, the finding should give us at least an average of what the prevalent haplogroup might suggest, that hopefully is where these beings came from. We'll find out together. Twelve brand new tracks heard by millions on your favorite channel, Third Phase of Moon. Available on iTunes, Amazon, and music streaming services. The moon, the strangest things. Available right now. Links are below. 